Let's kick this off like previous How to Parse 99 guides with mentioning parsing rules. Luckily, there are no adjustments on this boss, all damage and adds count. Just like I mentioned in the XT guide however, in order to achieve the 99 parse, you have to kill Hodir on hard mode. If you are trying to parse doing normal mode, you will never get the 99 as all hard modes rank higher than lower difficulties. So even if you pump hard on normal mode, everyone on hard mode will rank above you even with lower DPS. There are some abilities you need to be aware of that might hinder your 99 parse as they force us to move a lot. First is Biting Cold that is similar to the last boss in the Nexus dungeon. You receive a stacking debuff when you are not moving and each stack doubles the damage you take per second of the previous stack, eventually killing you if you remain stationary. So this debuff just forces you to move or seek out a campfire that prevents you from receiving a Biting Cold. Second one, Ice Shards. Can't be missed unless you have projected textures disabled in the graphics settings. Once in a while, a small blue circle will spawn underneath the player and after around 4 seconds later, a chunk of ice will drop to that location, knocking everyone within 7 yards back and dealing 14k damage. This is just annoying and all you need to do is to avoid it by moving away from the circle. Also, as this spawns on players directly, do not stand on NPCs as they will get interrupted when hit or do not stand on campfire. Stay near the campfire, but not on top of it as the ice shard will put the fire out. Third minor ability is Freeze. Similar to Frost Nova of Mage, this just freezes you on the spot, immobilizing you for 10 seconds. It's magic, so it can be dispelled or you can even shift out of it as Druid, but we don't want to waste precious global cooldowns on shifting in and out unless it is really needed as a prevention from getting killed with high amounts of biting cold debuff or getting frozen underneath ice shards. If there is no threat of dying while frozen, just ignore it and continue pumping. And last ability Hodir is doing is called Flash Freeze, another mechanic that just forces us to move. Every 50 seconds he will begin casting Flash Freeze that will turn everyone into block of ice after 9 seconds. However, also at this time, large blue circles will appear on the ground and similar to ice shards, you have to move out of there to avoid the damage. Once the ice will drop on the ground, it's gonna create a snow drift that makes you immune to flash freeze so you just have to move on the snow. Just remember, DPS and parsing is about keeping up time, utilizing every global cooldown without any delays and ABC, always be casting. So with all these mechanics that forces us to move, just make sure you are always throwing instant casts when moving out of ice shards or flash freeze or anything else. Refreshing Insect Swarm, Moonfire, Innerate, 4-piece tier 8 Starfire proc, Starfall, Typhoon or Trends are good options. When your dots still have high uptime, even just Moonfire spam is better than not doing anything while on the move. Of course standing still and blasting is doing way more DPS, so try to minimize movement unless you are forced to and expect the movement beforehand. Like I was saving trends for example and waiting for the first forced movement to cast them on the run so they will benefit from the heroism shortly after. Or if you see there's flash freeze coming soon and your dot just fell off, you already know you will be moving and can plan to use the global cooldown for refreshing the dots so you are basically trying to min-max every global cooldown. Hodir encounter is kinda a special one because you are actually trying to parse when doing hard mode as hard mode only means killing it faster, so it's all about pumping as much as possible. At the same time, there are three huge factors that are also primary mechanics that heavily influence your parse. In order to achieve 99, you have to take advantage of these mechanics. There are frozen NPCs in front of Hodir. On 25 men you'll find 2 druids, 2 shamans, 2 mages and 2 priests and once you free them, they buff up the rate increasing your damage output and leveraging these buffs is crucial in order to parse 99. First, mages. Mages NPCs summon toasty fire. These are little bonfires or campfires on the ground that prevent you from receiving a biting cold and freeze while within 11 yards of it. This is great as we can just stand still and blast the boss without any movement 
while there's extra benefit to it in the form of Singe debuff on boss that increases magical spells and effects and it stacks which massively increases spell damage, so stack it as fast as possible. Another benefit to it is having an extra 3k damage and when looking at my logs and top 10 boomy logs on Hodir, it's usually around 100k damage on average, which is roughly around 3% of the total damage. So not that bad as it's doing more than Insect Swarm or Moonfire. My highest singe damage on 99 parse log was even at 7% of total damage, so don't underestimate it. Then there are druids that are spawning starlight, which is a beam of light that increases casting speed by 50%, which is absolutely huge, especially when in lunar eclipse for starfire blasting. And last and most important ones for us are shamans. Once in a while they buff a random player with storm cloud and that player needs to spread the storm power buff to a few people around him. This buff increases critical strike damage by 145%. This buff is essential for parsing. Getting your hands on storm power should be the priority. Looking at logs, my 99s and all the high parsing boomies have one thing in common and that is around 60% and even more uptime of the storm power buff. If you can't get hands on the crit buff, you will most likely not get the 99 parse. Hell, even if the crit buff isn't spread to your casters and good players, it's probably not even possible to kill Hodir in time for hard mode. So let's talk about potion usage now. You have a couple of options and all of them are perfectly viable to achieve a 99 parse. First option is to pre-pod wow magic like we are used to. This is nice because the first starfall will benefit from the extra spell power when hitting multiple targets that are the frozen NPCs. Depending on your heroism timing, for the second potion you might use either potion of speed or wow magic again at the end of the fight. If I have crit buff but no heroism or beam, I'll go for potion of speed with hyperspeed accelerators and onus trinkets for the second potion. If I still have heroism or I have access to high uptime of the starlight beam with the crit buff, I will prefer wild magic over speed as you're already getting close to 1 second starfire cast at this time. The second option is not pre-potting at all and saving potion of wild magic for when stars align, meaning when you receive the crit buff, have access to starlight beam and heroism is up. This is when you pop wild magic with your lunar eclipse with onus trinkets and hyperspeed accelerators for some heavy blasting. At this time you might experience fred issues though as you really pump hard, but more on that later. I've tried both options and got 99 with both of them with similar DPS, the no pre-pod option crawling ahead a bit. If I look at the top 5 boomy parses on logs, some of them are going for pre-pod, some of them are going for wow magic with horizon, so both are viable, it's just a personal choice. I'm kinda leaning towards the second option with no pre-potting as it's just very satisfying to pump like crazy, casting fast starfires with crit buff, heroism and potion of wild magic hyperspeed accelerators and trinkets while standing in starlight beam, but at the same time, this option has basically one window when you are going absolutely crazy and there are two negatives to it. First one are threat and aggro issues. The other one is when you have just one window when you are going absolutely crazy pump doing around 40k dps, there's a higher risk of something going wrong to ruin it all. Like being forced to move at this time, which every global cooldown not spending on starfire nuke just means lowering dps by a lot and the opportunity to go giga chat parse is gone. So if you go for pre-pot, you have more control over it and lower the risk by having 3 semi pump windows, one with pre-pot second with heroism and third with another potion and you can decide what potion and when to pop it together with other cooldowns and starlight beam access. Alright starfall now. Since killing holder on hard mode takes 2 minutes at maximum, you can cast starfall no more than twice. I'm not delaying the first starfall at all since I wanted to hit multiple targets on pool that are the frozen NPCs. The only thing you might want to delay Starfall is to wait for the internal cooldowns of Trinkets or Tethering Cloak to proc before casting Starfall for some extra spell power, but I don't recommend it and I think it's not worth it on Holdir for multiple reasons. First, it's proccing Nature's Grace so your first cast will already benefit from faster cast times. Second, when you have the internal cooldowns of the Trinkets ready, chances are high they will proc fairly soon anyway 
so Starfall can still benefit from this spell power boost because you can't snapshot Starfall. Third, you don't want to sacrifice global cooldown mid-fight with a juicy lunar eclipse in a starlight beam other than a starfire nuke and you can find yourself in the situation when you decide to delay starfall. Fourth, it's easier for managing the fight as you don't have to pay attention to internal cooldowns and trying to figure out when to pop starfall but rather focus on other things. Fifth, if you delay way too much trying to wait for the perfect moment and your raid DPS is really good, you might even not make the second cast of Starfire in time. Sixth, your Starfall will hit multiple targets, so no star will be wasted if you do it on pool. And seventh, if you cast Starfall on pool, usually the second Starfall comes back right on Flash Freeze, so it's gonna be used again on multiple frozen NPCs and perhaps even coupled with crit buff. So what I'm doing on pool also depends on which potion strategy I'm going for, but usually I'm not pre-potting. I start with pre-casting Wrath on one of the frozen NPCs and throwing Starfall right after so it's gonna hit all the frozen NPCs as well as Holier. I might continue with one or two more Wrath casts on frozen NPCs, usually on the edges as they tend to be ignored more, but it all depends on their HP. Then I switch to Holier and cast Insect Swarm and Moonfire and proceed with Eclipse Rotation. I'm not popping trinkets and hyperspeed accelerators with the first lunar like we are used to on most bosses, but I'm waiting for the first lunar with crit buff with heroism where I use potion of wild magic. I'm not spec for typhoon on Holdir by the way, but if you have typhoon it's probably worth it to cast on pool on the frozen NPCs from side under slight angle so you'll hit as many targets as possible. So after the pool the play is to follow eclipse rotation. Seek out the first campfire so you can stand still and blast the boss while getting some extra 3k damage out of your cast and stacking the singe debuff on the boss as fast as possible at the same time. Don't forget to throw instant casts like trends when on the move to campfire. From here it's pretty much a priority list and reacting to things around you while already calculating what option is gonna do more dps at the time or in your future. So what I'm usually doing, after the first campfire I'm following Eclipse Rotation and seeking out the Storm Power Creed buff as my priority number one, as this increases your DPS the most without a doubt, while trying to leverage Starlight Beams at the same time. If I don't have the Storm Power buff and I'm in Solar Eclipse and I'm already near Campfire, it's probably worth it just to stand still and continue casting Brass, as it's pointless to go for the beam with Brass under 1 second cast time that is already under global cooldown anyway. You might argue it's worth it to go for the beam and cast Starfire even in Solar. This might be true, but you have to decide and calculate on the go. If you are in Solar Eclipse without Storm Power buff and spend a lot of time moving, trying to seek out a beam when there's no heroism or other casting speed increase, which will make your Starfire in the beam under approximately 1.3 second cast time, and you will also risk getting frozen or ice shard silco on beam as usually there's more people in it than near campfire and you are also getting biting cold stacks at the same time which eventually forces you to move again i would say it's not worth it to sacrifice radcast in solar near cozy campfire just to go for starfire cast in beam while in solar eclipse without the crit buff if you are getting lunar eclipse soon go for the beam for sure if you have the storm power crit buff, this is probably well worth it to go for the beam and cast starfire even in solar eclipse, especially under the effect of heroism, trinkets, potion or any other cooldown. So the dream play here obviously is to get the storm power buff, heroism is casting at this time and you are standing in beam while lunar eclipse is proc, so you pop potion of wild magic, hyperspeed accelerators, on your trinkets and you just blast Starfire and continue casting Starfire even after Lunar Lines and Solar Eclipse is procced. This is where we get to another part and that is Threat. This dream play comes with significant Threat issues as you can imagine, so what can we do about it? Well, except going for 2 points in Nature's Reach for the 30% Threat reduction, not that much. Make sure you have great tanks and they are getting tricks of the trade on cooldown but even that is probably not enough when this dream play comes in. You can stop casting when you have threat issues, but at the same time you don't want to, not only for par sake, but also if you want to kill it in time for hard mode. Good thing is that the boss is tauntable, 
So if you know it's coming, your tank should be ready to taunt it off you. You also should call for Hand of Salvation or even Hand of Protection. Looking at the top Boomy Parsis, almost all of them have received a Hand of Protection or at least Hand of Salvation so they were free to nuke in this dream scenario. This brings us to Talents and Glyphs. I'm going for the Glyph of Insect Swarm, Starfall and Starfire as they are my backbone of single target Uldar bosses and Haldir is no exception. There isn't any better choice that can dish out more DPS when you have parsing in mind. The only thing coming somewhat close is using Glyph of Focus instead of Starfire, which I'm going for on Kologan for example. On Haldir it can come slightly ahead, but only if you Starfall both times the frozen NPCs and the second cast is with crit buff. But the range can screw you over, one star not hitting because of range is already a DPS loss and you also have to rely on crit buff just to crawl ahead very slightly. So I always choose consistency and range in form of Starfire, Insect Swarm and Starfall. Regarding the talents, I was using my default single target spec on all my kills, but since I already experienced the threat issues, going for 2 points nature's reach is definitely the play. I would switch the point out of Oaken Frenzy as I have never seen an Oaken Frenzy proc on locks on Holdir, so it's pretty much a useless point here anyway. I'm not using Typhoon here, but it can be useful and can dish out good overall damage if used correctly on the frozen NPCs or as an extra instant cast alternative on movement. So if you prefer Typhoon, it's definitely viable on Holdir and most likely will mean taking point out of Brambles. That's pretty much it, good luck and don't forget to subscribe for more similar content in near future.